Hi, and welcome to the 25th Octoprint on Air uh, broadcast uh, live, at least if you're not watching this as a recording, but right now, uh, from my uh, home office on this lovely Friday evening. Um, uh, as usual, just a quickly a short outline of what I'm going uh, to talk to you about today, which is basically the same thing that I'm always talking to you about uh, in these things. Uh, I'll first tell you what I've been up to, then what will be my next steps uh, with regards to developing Octoprint. Uh, then we'll have a quick look at the usage, usage statistics, uh, which are still not publicly, publicly available and st uh, for this reason, I, I, I present them here regularly. And finally, we'll have a short Q&A segment with three questions, I think. Oh, and I know I forgot to disable something. An diesem Datum ist die Kalenderwoche 28. I forgot to disable the snips hot word. Okay, so now I fixed that. Uh, I hope that caused a laugh for you. Um, yeah, uh, as always, for those of you watching this live, uh, there is a live chat on desktop. It's right below on mobile. It's uh, sorry on desktop. It's towards the right on mobile. It's over there. Um, and uh, yeah, as usual, I will keep an eye on that and uh, feel free to ask any kind of questions that pop up during this uh, during this uh, this broadcast. If you have any uh, that are not yet in the uh in the sheet yeah okay so what i've been up to so first of all the most important thing for me that i have been up to the past couple of weeks ever since the last installment is visible there because this is the ac unit that i bought for this office a couple of weeks ago and uh or actually a couple of months ago and um which i finally fixed up in order to be able to use it here because I needed a pass through solution for the, the hose of that thing to go through the balcony door. And uh, since there was this heat wave uh, uh, approaching Germany, I, yeah, I, I quickly got up to that and did that and all that. And um, thankfully I got it working just in time. So uh, expect a bit more productivity than you saw last summer, hopefully this time around, because uh, it won't, it hopefully <laughs> won't go up to 37, 38 degrees in this office anymore, but only like 10 degrees less than that, which is still way too hot actually, but it's the best this thing can do. And uh, I'm happy it can do that because yeah, before it was just horrible, I can tell you. Anyhow, um, I uh, let me quickly switch over to the right screen um, because yeah, in the past you uh, repeatedly asked what I have been up to with regards to printing stuff. And so I figured I just show you a picture of the solution that I did. I mean, it's not that awesome. I just had this little adapter that fit the hose here and fit the the thingy that I bought here and I also had to do some woodworking in order to get this to a height where it would actually work with my uh, door and all that. So 3D printing to the rescue, all of this stuff, of course, printed on Octoprint, obviously. So yeah, this was something that I was up to the past couple of weeks actually during working hours because yeah, sorry, but I needed to get this running and uh, the fast, uh, as fast as possible. So yeah. <clears throat> And um, since we are here, and also since uh, yeah, you do, uh, I uh, I often heard these these kind of questions before. As I said, some other stuff that I printed not during working hours, but still uh, dice table for our role playing dice and dice storage for role playing dice and uh, condition indicators and. Uh, containers for that for my uh, dungeon master. So <clears throat> yeah, a lot of fun was had. Anyhow, um, just wanted to quickly show you this. And now back to me. Um, yeah, and uh, apart from <laughs> this more or less, yeah, side notey, side notey kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, the past weeks actually saw me doing a lot more maintenance than I originally had planned on, which yeah, was not entirely 
something I was happy about, but well, it needed to get done. So I still had a couple of things in my in my task backlog for oh, and my voice voice is starting to go away. That's a great timing. <clears throat> Let's hope it stays. Um, yeah, I still had some stuff in my backlog for one three twelve that I tackled. So uh, things like um, uh, preventing installs of new plugins and also updates of plugins and Octoprint if the system is throttled. Because this is something where I repeatedly saw tons of issues in the field with people doing that on throttle system, the throttle system browning out for some reason or another, and then uh, for that reason the update failing and destroying the, the system in question in some ways or another and a lot of support overhead due, due to that. Though I so I hope that by doing this I will be able to, yeah, help people avoid these situations in the future. So if you are, if your system is throttled, you will not be able to update it anymore. So, and what is a throttle system? So I mentioned that a, a couple of times already, I guess. So uh, the Raspberry Pi has the situation where if it doesn't get enough current or if it's overheating, it will throttle itself. And this is something that Octoprint has been able to detect now since 1.3.10, I think. Um, might also have been earlier, I'm not entirely sure. Anyhow, it, it displays this little warning in the navigation bar if this is happening or ha has happened in the past. And if it's currently an issue, it will also blink. And a ton of people are still completely ignoring this situation and then still running updates or otherwise computational intensive stuff and then get confused when they fail. So yeah, the, the idea here is that this will in the future will be more clear why yeah that this is not a good idea and that's, that this is a problem that needs to be fixed in order to be able to continue to use Octopin and ex expect it to work like it should. Yeah. Then another thing that has been on my to-do list for quite a while now, so there there are reports of, of these situations again and again due to faulty G-code or something where a printer might request the same line over and over and over again because it can't make sense of it. Common reason for that is actually um, yeah, people using um, start G code generated for or, or recommended for older versions of Cura where the placeholders for the uh, first layer temperature still were called differently than they are now. So they uh, don't get replaced. Um, the stuff stays in, in the G code. So instead of something like M109 uh, S220, you have something like M109 S and then the placeholder. So it's not parsable by the firmware and some firmware just ignores it. But other firmware then will say, well, something about this line is wrong and please send it again. And Octoprint, of course, yeah, it doesn't have another version of this line because this line is broken in the G code. And so we'll just send this line again and then the, the firmware will ask about this line again, so on and so on and so on. So um, yeah, in order to avoid this, Octoprint will now with, with 1.3.12 start to track how often uh, a certain line has been requested and I, I can't remember right now I think I set it, if it to something like five or ten times if, it, if it's always the same line and it will assume something is, has gone wrong with the line and trigger an error so in the future that will hopefully yeah stop the printer getting stuck for hours on end if you don't regularly monitor it which you really should even if you run Octoprint um, uh, uh, with heaters on and all that and just stuck in this re recent uh, request loop, but instead it will detect something is broken and uh, yeah, just decide, okay, I can't continue like this and give up. Yeah. Um, yeah, then there were also some funny documentation build issues all of a sudden. So the, the, the documentation would not build anymore because something changed in a third, third, third party dependency. And I found a workaround, but yeah, I, that was not planned at all. Um, and then also there was some interesting caching problem that apparently made its way into 1.3.11 and which for some reason uh, neither crept up in my own developer tests nor in any of the um, release candidate tests or rather in, in, during the release candidate phase, which was so if, if you had a wizard show up, and then just did a normal reload of the site or something, the wizard would pop up again because the browser wasn't instructed to clear this cache correctly. And I fixed this as well. So in 1.3.12, that problem will be gone. And um, 
Yeah, what I also added is something that will hopefully help me a ton in the future as well. Um, and also the plugin authors out there, uh, because there has, have been repeated requests if it would be possible to see not only um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the usage tracking, not, not only how or what plugins get installed, so actively installed, newly installed, but also which pl plugins are already installed. And I had to revamp the tracking server a bit in order to allow for this which I finally did <laughs> and succeeded in. And now I can track uh, installed plugins uh, during the startup of the server. And I'm still thinking if I should maybe make that part of the ping event, but I'm not entirely sure because it's a lot of data that needs to be stored somehow. And I already had to upgrade the server because it ran out of disk space once. So yeah, mm, not sure about that yet. Maybe I'll just introduce something like a daily event or something. I'm not sure, but yeah, so uh, in the future, as if you are a plugin developer, you can now in the future expect some data from me also in these um, in these um, broadcasts and also in uh, once I finally get around to uh, make the stats public in some way also there, how often your plugins are installed and also which versions. So this is data that I will then finally have, which so far I didn't have. Yeah, and also what I did while well edit is while at it is that I uh, am now also tracking slicing events. So yeah, a lot of people were a bit miffed that I unbundled the Cura engine plugin that so far was bundled from Octoprint 1.3.11. And um, yeah, I, I, I always had the feeling from the feedback that I got that next to no one actually slices on Octoprint. I mean, of course, there are some workflows that are very specific, maybe due to being in a school where there is no way to install software directly on a laptop or something. But still, it, it seems to be a corner case. So in the future, I at least have some data for that. Of course, obviously, it will now be more of a corner case that there is no plugin bundled anymore, but still. Um, yeah, and I also did some some yeah, hardening of the system against uh, garbage on the serial line during initial connect and all that. So yeah, a ton, a ton of tiny stuff that that is not immediately like, oh, awesome feature, but will hopefully help people in the long run uh, to have some smoother kinds of operations. <clears throat> well, yeah, and basically due to all of this maintenance stuff that suddenly, yeah, partially suddenly, partially planned, crept up. I actually got around to working on Devil Way less than I originally planned, and I hope to correct that in the next month. Um, but now I'm back on working on the connection profiles that I mentioned last time, and I'm making good progress. Um, the whole uh, dialogues for, for, for additional transport parameters and, and, and protocol parameters and all that, they work. They are now uh, yeah dynamically generated based on whatever kind of layer uh, protocol or transport you have selected. Part of parts of that were also already working last time, but now you can also, yeah, now also some, some help text and all that can be added. And, and so that works fine. Um, what I'm currently working on is combining that stuff with the, with the settings that are already defined in the new com layer so that you can directly change that. So I just have to list all these uh, settings and then figure out a way to present them to the user so that no one gets completely confused because right now it's this long list of stuff, which so far was yeah hidden partially in this advanced option stuff that you uh, see in the serial connection settings uh, today and also spread across multiple tabs, but generating that automatically and dynamically for each and uh, yeah, for just from configuration data is a bit tricky. So yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to figure this out and I'm sure I'll find a solution, but for now I just want to get everything to work and then, yeah. And then worry about the presentation layer later, basically. Yeah. So, uh, what are the next steps? So I already mentioned, I want to get, uh, uh, back on track or rather back. I want to do what I already had planned for the last month, which is to concentrate way, way more on the devil branch and way less on the maintenance stuff. Um, the backlog for 1312 is now pretty empty, uh, at least regarding the to do's that I already had. Uh, of course, if a bug is reported, that always takes precedence. So yeah, that, that will still get tackled, but otherwise it really has reduced priority now that uh, the existing, uh, 
yeah, I'm stumbling over my tongue and my my uh, vocal cords are <laughs> are not uh, at in tip top shape. It's a great day apparently. Um, yeah, so so reduce priority for now. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't think that within the next month I release one three twelve or anything like that. I'm not even sure when I push a first release candidate. I'm monitoring what is in there. And when it looks like it will make sense, I will also do that. But of course, that will, as usual, mean something like two to three weeks doing nothing but 1.3.12 again. And I really want to avoid that right now with everything else that I need to do. So, yeah, that will take a while to come, I think. But, yeah, if push comes to shove, there's always the maintenance branch with a more or less stable version of uh, what 1.3.12 will become. So feel free to just take a look at that if you desperately need something now. Um, okay, so with that out of the way, let's take a quick look at the stat. Oh, right, I need to shift you over as well, of course. Uh, right, so um, for those of you that have uh yeah watch this a uh, couple of months now you will see that there is not much to see actually or rather not much change to see um we still have something like within the last 30 days we are still seeing something like 50,000 instances it, it's it's always around 200 years <laughs> the the accumulated printing duration during that time and there are always these funny little waves in there. This little spike here, don't get confused by that. That was me upgrading the server and hence taking down the tracking server for something like an hour and that showed here and also there. I don't know what's up with this map at the moment. It seems to be a browser problem because sometimes it shows, sometimes it doesn't. Right now it doesn't again. Well, I can take a look if I can make it show up this way. Partially, apparently. I don't understand it. Anyhow, yeah, so... This also hasn't changed a lot. Um, I think we are pretty much now at the saturation point, more or less. Ah, oh, look, now it's here again. I don't know. Um, uh, what is visible here is that people are slowly migrating away from 1.3.10, but there's still a ton of people running that version. And um, the same for, for the RCs. Um, for some reason, people were printing a ton of stuff on July the, the 2nd. I have no idea why. Um, and these spikes here is something that I still need to take a closer look at because I think that is wrong data. Um, and it would actually make sense that it only shows up for the 1.3.10 uh, and I don't have any such spikes for 1.3.11 because I changed the way that the print duration is tracked in 1.3.11 uh, to avoid situations like this due to a shifting system clock and I think this is probably the reason for these huge spikes there. Okay, um, then something that, oh, yeah, give it a moment. I upgraded the server, but it's still a ton of stuff that it needs to do all at, all at once. Okay, so um, I mentioned a change to the plug-in tracking stuff. Um, and so far we only had this, so top 10 new uh, plug-in installs over the past 30 days were these plug-ins. So these were the plug-ins that over the past 30 days were installed most and how often. And what we will now have, starting with 1212, which currently looks a bit uninteresting because it only contains my two or three uh, test instances here, is um, more detailed data about the plugins that are installed already. So not new installs, but already installed. And also as a full blown um, tuple of plugin identifier and installed version. So for example, you would see here's a Cura Legacy 101 and somewhere down here, there must also be, yeah, Akira Legacy 102. Um, so this is data that we will now also be able to track, which will help plugin developers a lot, I think, um, to know how popular their stuff is and, and, and also if people are actually updating their stuff. I mean, I know it has helped me a lot uh, knowing when people were swapping over to new new versions, so I hope that it will also help any plugin developers out there a lot, uh, knowing the same stuff. And yes, I'm still looking into making all of this publicly available in some way, um, doing my best. 
just it doesn't have a very high priority I have to admit with everything else that is going on and there we have the problem with the map again I don't understand it oh well okay um, yeah I really if any one of you has an idea why so many people were apparently printing a ton of stuff on July 2nd I would love to know because I tried to figure it out and I couldn't think of anything um, yeah Maybe someone can shed some light on this mystery for me. All right, um, now over to the Q&A section. And so we just switch here and wait, let's do it that way. Okay. Uh, so we start with the first question, which was a really, really long question, which is why I uh, paraphrased it and condensed it a bit in the process. And I hope Michael or Michael, I'm not entirely sure. Um, uh, that is fi fine for you. Um, so the question is, what are your thoughts on a Pi 4 as a print server? Uh, will it allow for better print quality? Will you look into native support for multiple printers at once? Um, so yeah. First of all, yay, new Pi or something. Uh, it uh, was a bit of a surprise for me as well. Uh, uh, and uh, thankfully, uh, Pi Moroni was uh, kind enough to send me one. So, and even with a heatsink, which uh, as it turns out is really, really needed. Um, so I was able to do at least some tests, but only earlier this week. Um, and yeah, the only things that I did so far with this thing uh, is that I yeah I booted uh, booted it up with the newest uh, developer version or rather the newest um, uh, nightly build of of Octopi so what is going to be Octopi 017 and it booted and it connected to the net and that looked fine and I could uh, access the Octoprint uh, yeah the Octoprint interface on it everything felt speedy as usual but not yet not not I mean not different from a from a three three B plus. But what I noticed when I touched it was, holy cow, does this thing get hot? So what I did was I um, fetched my Flow One and uh, took a look at it uh, with some with, with with that. And yeah, so this was only measuring uh, 53.8 degrees uh, Celsius, but it also uh, went up to 55 or something, and that is idle with a heat with a heatsink and in a room with an ampere temperature at that time thanks to to the ac control the ac control that is doubled uh the 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 ac of uh, uh i think 26 degrees so i don't know about you but it, it struck me a bit as too hot because uh yeah comparing that to the pi 3 for example the pi 3 set at something like 36 at that point so yeah mm. So, so for some reason it's it's really really hot even in idle and even with a heatsink and I then put it under a small stress test of two minutes of crunching some some numbers and um, that put it up to what was it 65 or something and that is only measured through the FLIR so I did not look at the at the CPU um, temperature that is measured by the device itself but I looked at that and considering that the core temperature was probably a bit higher than what the heatsink was uh, sinking. Yeah, I can see these things getting thermally throttled quite quickly in the field under a bit of load. So, hmm. yeah, mm. so I'm not too happy about that. Um, the, uh, the thing is that yeah, I mean, if it if it gets throttled because it's overheating, then first of all, all the pr all the added power of that thing pretty much yeah gets throttled away. So there's no significant uh, uptick anymore about uh, of it for it. Uh, I can't I can't English today. <laughs> so there's no advantage anymore uh, to use it over an RPI three in my book or an RPI three plus in my book, and. Um, Anyhow, I don't really think that there will be that much of a difference or, or perceivable difference or noticeable difference in print quality between that and a Pi, Pi 3B plus. So, yeah. So currently I'm, I'm not sure that 
I would use that thing to drive Octoprint. Or rather, I'm, I'm fairly sure that I wouldn't because it just feels wasted. And also, I don't want my print server to produce 55 or something degrees uh, of, of heat just sitting there doing nothing. Um, I mean, it doesn't seem to draw more power or not significantly more power. I also put it on my uh, little uh, USB power measurement thingy. Uh, power Z, I think it's called, uh, and, and and basically, yeah, put that between the 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 power supply and the Pi uh, wire USB C, and that measured something like I think it was 700 milliamps and in idle, and I forgot to do a load measurement, but that felt still okay-ish, but if it's converting most of this into heat, it's a bit stupid. So yeah. Um, and I know that uh, there is supposed to be a new firmware update that uh, reduces the heat a bit or rather the, the temperatures a bit because apparently they forgot to enable some power saving feature of the USB 3 chipset, if I understood this correctly. The thing though also is that I uh, heard that it only reduces the temperature by something like 3 to 5 degrees, which means like it, it's now at 50. Mm, still fairly hot. So. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. In any case, uh, other, the, the, the last part of the question was uh, whether I'm looking into native support for multiple printers. And right now, I, I frankly am not. Um, the thing is that running multiple instances of Octoprint even today on, an, on a 3D, 3B plus or something like that is... The things to do that are there. I wouldn't say that I, I, would, uh, I would recommend doing it because... Um, yeah, my my experience with recommending any kind of setup like this is that people quickly overdo it and then run something like eight instances or 20 instances of something, uh, so figuratively speaking, and then people will run into issues and then come to me and complain, why did you say that works when it doesn't when I completely overdo it? So I'm saying stick to one instance per per Raspberry Pi, but in theory, the command line arguments and everything are there. So if you want to read into that, uh, read up on that, uh, do an octoprint dash dash help that will already tell you a ton about it and uh, then you can do it. And there's also some stuff on an old mailing list lying around somewhere and I think also on the forum. So in theory it's possible uh, to run multiple instances on it already. And um, yeah, changing in, in the, the, the default support of the whole architecture of Octoprint itself, so what, multiple printer driving per instance is something that requires a lot of work. So I'm preparing things in that direction already with a new com layer, which uh, at least does not exclude this, uh, though it doesn't fully integrate implement it yet. But the thing is, I would need to change the whole API layer uh, and I would need to change the whole uh, user interface. And frankly, I think there are more pressing concerns at the moment. Um, like, like, yeah, concentrating on the devil branch um, instead of uh, opening a new can of worms with something that is maybe not that big of a deal to most people out there. So it might make sense maybe at some point to make some kind of uh, of of poll how many people are actually o actually own multiple printers that they want to drive from one from one raspberry pi my impression so far was that the majority actually just does this one pi per printer thing if they even have more than one printer so i'm not saying that i do not want to support something like that forever but i think that there are things that concern everyone that I need to tackle first, which on one hand is 140 and on the other hand is after that is out of the door, I need to do something about this user interface thing, which of course I could then also do with having multiple printers in uh, at the back of, a, of my head basically and, and take this into consideration for the design, uh, so for the functional design, I should say. Um, yeah, but right now I really cannot justify doing that. And um, as I said, I don't think that there is a, from, from this point of view, I don't think there is even that big of a difference between a Pi 4 and a Pi 3B and the Pi 4 really, even if it didn't have this overheat issues, I w issue or I'm not sure if it, I should call it an issue, but it, even if it didn't get that hot, which really strikes me as a bit odd, 
I uh, still would think that something with two HDMI out and uh, don't know what else that thing has USB 3, which most of our printers, uh, they are probably still USB 1. So I don't, don't think that I should recommend using that as a print server right now. It just feels wasted and like a little radiator at the same time. <clears throat> Anyhow, I hope that answers this question or rather these questions, because it was like that or uh, that big of a paragraph, <laughs> but it's fine. I mean, as, as long as it's fine that I paraphrased it. Okay, uh, so next question by Christian. Uh, does anyone have Octoprint with SmoothieWare running? Uh, is it intended to upload to the Smoothie SD card only or streaming as well? Any major drawbacks, any opinions? So I took a quick look into the usage data because I also track the, the firmware that is reported, uh, yeah, the, the firmware name that is reported by the firmware in response to M115 that I sent on Connect. And according to that, um, 160 of these 50,000 instances run uh, SmoothieWare. So they do, uh, sorry, sorry, no, that was in the last week, not in the last month. So more like, uh, I think it is something like 30,000 that I see per week, because not every instance is on every week. Uh, there is a bit of fluctuation in there. Um, so 160 SmoothieWare instances in the past week. And um, so I would say, yes, people are using it. It's, it's not a lot of people compared to other kinds of firmwares, but people are using it definitely and as far as i know from those people who do use it regularly for driving their printers i uh, i have not heard any complaints that streaming uh, isn't working and that you can only or that you can only use the sd card so it seems to work just fine and uh, yeah it's been a while since i uh, used it myself um Ah, uh, Brian just said he uses SmoothieWare for years, works as well as any other firmware, and he always streams G-code of Octoprint, uh, upload to Octoprint only. So yeah, there you have it. First, uh, first, uh, uh, how do, yeah, I can't English today. We already said that. First hand, uh, first hand report. Now we have it. <coughs> Apologies, that's still my throat going nuts. Um, yeah, so uh, I also did some tests a couple of years ago, or not a couple of years ago, but maybe a year ago by now with uh, with uh, with the hardware that I have here that supports Smoothie, which is both a Smoothie board and, um, and a rearm. And that also worked fine. So yeah, in general, if you want any kind of opinions or experience reports or something like that on any kind of firmware compatibility or whatnot, I strongly suggest to, um, yeah, to also maybe open a topic on the Octoprint community forums, because there's probably a bunch of people who run your uh, configuration or something simil similar to your configuration that can tell you if there are any kinds of drawbacks or any kinds of things to be aware of or, or workarounds that you might need or anything like that. So yeah, just a tip maybe. <laughs> Okay, and with that we come to the final question that was submitted beforehand and like half an hour before this. Um, question by Brian, what is the statu uh, state status status of, of, of the Python 3 port, its anticipated release date and its priority? So, as I mentioned in a couple of past broadcasts, the port in general is done. So the Dever branch, as it is right now, which is going to be the one for all release, is Python 3 compatible. It also did the unit test suits and all that get also run in both 2.7 and one uh, and and uh, uh, Python 3, 7, 6, 3, 7, 3, 5, 6 and 7, I think, actually. Um, so that stuff works. Uh, I do not have a release date yet uh, because, yeah, I simply st still have a ton of stuff that needs to go in there. First, first and foremost, the new communication layer. Um, but the goal is to get it out in time for the 2.7 end of life date. Read 
this year because yeah so probably i, I hope to be able to have a one for all out by uh the end of 2019 and it has a corresponding high priority the thing is that i really want to get this bloody new com layer in there because uh yeah i've been meaning to get that out now for a couple of years actually maybe longer than the the python end of life date was uh, even fixed and uh, that thing takes time however if i should feel that i'm not able to get one for out for one for all out this year because of this com layer then i will rather postpone the com layer and get one for out out one for all out as is so yeah that that really takes priority in any case um python 2.7 ha- uh, seeing end of life uh, for for new releases and all that in in 2020 doesn't necessarily mean or doesn't actually mean at all that every python 2 points uh, every python 2 uh interpreter all out there that already exists will cease working um so octoprint 13x uh, and 12x and 11x and 10x will continue to work just fine with uh, whatever exists out there with regards to Pi, Pi 2.7. And the thing is, I know there won't be any kind of security updates anymore and I am aware that uh, this is a problem and I obviously want to get uh, get one for all out before the end of life date due to that. However, considering the data that I have on uh, Python versions and Octopy versions and Octoprint versions and plugin versions now as well, and, uh, and in general, the environmental data from the platforms that people run Octoprint on, I have to say, I, I don't see the majority of Octoprint users immediately updating. And so I, yeah, I also don't see them updating their Python versions a lot. So there's some really ancient stuff out there. I even saw some Octopi 011 uh, a couple of months ago. So hmm. I, I, yeah, as I said, it has a right pri- uh, high priority for me to get this out of the door. But I also want don't want people to think that I don't know we are now facing an apocalyptic setting where uh, existing software will just cease to function and everything will immediately be broken and uh, no longer work and all of that uh, and and, yeah and similar stuff uh, because of this end of life date. It only means that Python 2.7 will no longer see any more releases and obviously software like mine is, is urged and encouraged and urged to update. Uh, to be compatible to the new uh, Python version. And as I said, I'm on that and that will happen. And actually it already has more or less happened. It's just not yet in a rele- in a, in a, in a, in a stable release. And um, yeah, it's, uh, I have to say it's actually increasing the support overhead a bit, how the Python tooling is pushing this situation because a lot of people have been severely confused by this whole, oh my God, Python 2.7 is going to die soon and you need to update your tooling, which pip now prints out when you use it. And this is something that I as a developer know and can use with and uh, and can use with, sorry, and can deal with and know what to do about it and also know how to interpret. But uh, your random end user who just installed an image and uh, installed some plugin which uses pip under the hood and got this as a, as, a, as a scary red warning in their installation dialog, they don't know this and they immediately think that everything will stop working. And they just want to say, no, this will not happen. Everything will continue to work just fine for the foreseeable future. Yes, we will still update, but uh, there is no reason to panic, so to speak. Okay, so. That is just me standing on my soapbox about this whole topic because uh, I think there is a lot of confusion out there and uh, yeah, some things are really contributing to that. Okay, so that was the last question from the backlog and just quickly taking a look over to the live chat. But nope, nothing there. 
So yeah, if there is nothing else from the live chat, I'm giving people a couple of minutes just in case, a couple of moments just in case, but nope. Okay. Then I guess it's just time to wrap this up. Uh, the temperature is also increasing in this room, so it's time to either open up some doors again or fire up the AC. <laughs> and I really need to do something about <clears throat> these vocal cords. Uh, chords? Chords? Whatever. Yeah. So, uh, the next broadcast will again be roughly in a month. Plus, more plus than minus two weeks or something. I'm not entirely sure yet. I'll also be taking... A a, a, a vacation in, in August, in the middle of which I will be at the Chaos Communication Camp uh, 2019. So if you should happen to also be going there, then please feel free to either ping me beforehand so we can schedule something to meet up or something, or just if you run there, uh, run into me there, uh, feel free to say hi. Um, but yeah, I will also repeat that in the next installment, um, uh, for which I, of course, as usual, will also post the appointment on Patreon. I will also see that I put the recording of this one up sometime next week. Uh, I'll take a look when exactly. And with that being said, uh, yeah, just let me say, after switching back to myself, um, uh, yeah, thanks for, for watching and I hope it was interesting. And um, uh, until next time, happy printing. Bye.